so we know what a polygon is. I know we covered it in, in, uh, in the past. For us to see it, a polygon is a closed figure where the sides are straight. Now I have a pencil, then I have a hexagon. And I remember when, back in the days when we covered it, I gave you guys a list of names. So we know that's a polygon. Now the word regular, because we're dealing with regular polygons, the word regular, what it means is the length of each side is the same. So if I give you guys on my on my pentagon and I say one side is five, you know each side is five. And then at the same time, if I give you guys one of my degrees, if I tell you guys, you know, degrees is certain things, you guys know all my degrees are the exact same thing. So I, if I come and say this is 72, you know each degree, each corner is 72 degrees. But right, that's what makes it a regular polygon. The same thing with the hexagon and so on and so forth. So my formula for today works only for regular polygons. In real life, we might deal with polygons that are not regular, but for the working for today, they will all be regular. Now, on a regular polygon or any polygon, I can either construct, use a radius, or in this type of tool we call a radii, I can just use a radii that creates triangles. You notice my pentagon, I created five triangles. My hexagon, I created six triangles. You guys see those, those are my radii. If I was to extend it, you know, if that was a piece of paper, and I cut it out and I extend it, it looks like a bunch of triangles. Now, for this thing, the interesting part of a uh, of, um, polygon, I'm going to introduce you guys, let's see. I'm going to introduce you guys to this measurement. It's not the radius. The radius is the dotted one. This other one, we're going to call this apothecary. That's so why I'm using A for that little part. That part, because it's not the radius, is what we call the apothecary. Some people pronounce it apostom, some others pronounce it apostom. I don't know which one's the right pronunciation. You can ask your English teachers and then some of them will use one, apostom, and then some others will call it apostom. So, I will call it apostom, but like I've run into some math teachers that are like, no, it's apostom, and then some others like, no, it's apostom. But I'm just going to go with apostom. Okay, so having this said, we're going to talk about the area of it. So for what I'm going to do, as an example, I'm just going to refer to my pentagon. Do me a favor and graph that pentagon to, to begin with. Graph it with the triangles, because I want to emphasize, if you want to put, I put an A on the apostle. If you want to put the whole name for it, you can go for it. But to, I just want to emphasize that to begin with, the type is the triangle. I'm not going to have you guys do the hexagon. We're just going to go with the pentagon. And then once you finish copying it, do me a favor and copy that as well. Let me take roll meanwhile. that to calculate the area of a regular polygon, we can divide the polygon into triangles and add the area of the triangle. And that's one way we can do it. We divide it into triangles and add the area of the triangle. But a faster way of doing it 
it is one half times T times A, where T stands for perimeter and A stands for applicant. That way I take care of all the triangles I want. The faster way of doing it is one half times T times A. And then my perimeter is basically all the sides times applicable. Remember to calculate the area of a regular polygon, we can divide the polygon into triangles and not the area of the triangle. Faster way of doing it is one half times T times A, where T stands for perimeter and A stands for applicable. Sometimes I get asked, what's the difference between geometry CC and geometry D? Like, uh, why do you, well, when we calculate a GPA, an A for geometry CT is four points, but an A in gate is five points. Like, why did they get more? One thing that I can do, that I can tell you guys, what we do with the gate classes, or what we encourage on the gate classes, is that we don't give them the aperture. We give them the radius instead. You know, the radius is the dotted line, so I can come and say, well, that's five, and I'll give you the radius is five, and let's say the whole side is six. And then from there, they have to be able to calculate the applicant. One way they can do it is, they come and say, well, the applicant, I can split it in three and three. I mean, the side, I can split it in three and three because the applicant goes in the middle. So they're looking at eight triangles. And then uh, you guys are familiar with Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So they do it a squared plus three squared equals five squared, and then they will figure that the applicant is four. Once they find the applicant, they have to calculate the, the area of the, of the polygon. With these guys, like a uh, geometry CT, I come over and give you the, the measurement gap. You just have to find out the area of the polygon. Like I said, with them, we give them the radius, they have to calculate some more. And also with uh, CT, I do many examples with gate, we kind of back up, back up a little. We kind of explain a little, but gate, they need to figure out things on their own. So that's one of the difference between gate and CT, if you guys ever wonder. Can I take you out? Yeah. Next. All right, let's take a look at our homework. Take a look at our worksheet. So the formula was, one half times perimeter times applicant. So I said that we were going to do one half times perimeter times applicant. So one half in the calculator, I'm going to call it 0 0.5. The perimeter for this case, I noticed there, there are seven sides. Each side is 11.6. So my perimeter should be 11.6 times 7. Right, the 7 because there are seven sides. So the perimeter is 11.6 times 7, and my applicant in this case is a 12, right? It's given, it's 12, so I just have to multiply those out. Do keep in mind it says round your answer to the nearest tenth if necessary. You know, tenth sounds like 10. I know the number 10 has one zero, so nearest tenth means one decimal place. If I said 100, two decimal places. So nearest tenth, I'm saying one decimal place. If you guys multiply everything, 0 0.5 times 11.6 times 7 times 12, you should get 487.2. That's it. Like I said, with you guys, I will give you guys the apple. Let's take a look at question number two. Once again, I know the formula is one half times perimeter times applicant. I know the formula, I gave it to you guys in your notes. 
if you guys can highlight it or something, that way you guys know where it's at, that would be nice. I know sometimes I see people write notes on their worksheets, on their homework, but do remember I don't give the homework back. So anything you write on the worksheet, I'm going to keep. Anything you write on your notes, you'll be able to keep. So um, I urge more to write it on the notes. Okay, so I know one half of experiments and half of them. So one half in the calculator is 0 0.5. The perimeter, I'm looking at um, each side is 15.6. I'm going to multiply times 6 this time because there's 6 sides. And then I notice the apothem is 13.5. You grab a calculator, you multiply that out, you should get 631.8. Let me take a look at uh, question number four. So I'm going to skip three. Let me take a four. I know yesterday we, we talked about triangles. And if our triangle was one half times base times height, technically you have the base, because you can stand it on that. Technically that side is 15.6. But now this is not the height. This 4.5 is not the height. And we cannot come and assume that's half of the height, because you can see that 4.5 is not half of the height. So since you don't have the height, you have an apothem, use your formula, one half times perimeter times apothem. Remember back in the day, I used to ask you guys, I would give you guys a triangle. I used to ask you guys for a circle that touch all three corners. That point is that point. Like the apothem comes from that point, from the center of that circle. Like I said, so it's not the half of the height. It's what we call our center. Okay, so now here, I'm going to go one half is 0 0.5. Uh, the perimeter is 15.6 times 3. And then the apothem is 4.5. I'm just going to go ahead and multiply everything across. And I get 105.3. Just because you see a triangle, don't think it's like a triangle like yesterday, because you don't have the height. You have the apathy. So simple. Any questions?